I really think the uh, pricing is right. Guys, I'm excited about the video today. We're putting these devices through their paces this is from battery power and uh, I've got a 12 volt 100 amp hour battery from them as well as a cool solar charge controller. We're in the process of uh, testing both of these. This uh, shunt is my own and the spaghetti of wires is just uh, because we're doing a fast uh, test. This is not a permanent uh, installation in this location. I think you guys are going to be pretty impressed with what this stuff costs. Bang for the buck is really good on this. Let's unbox this battery. Comes with uh, the terminal screws, which is excellent. And we've got uh, some documentation. Not too shabby. Let's unbox this solar charge controller. Got some documentation here. This appears to be a temperature sensor, kind of an adhesive pad. And there's the charge controller. This is all metal. A nice big heat sink back here. There are our ports on the bottom. And this is kind of cool. This is a little magnetic uh, door that uh, pops off and gives you access to the terminal screws. This is the Sunrock 20S. So that's this column right here. And I'm not sure you probably won't be able to read this at all uh, from the camera. This charge controller can support 12, 24, 36, or 48 volt batteries. And it can support lead acid, AGM, gel batteries, all of those, and lithium batteries. Your solar panel string needs to be under 150 volts. When charging a 12 volt battery, the maximum amount of solar it can be connected to is 300 watts. In 24 volt mode, the it doubles and it goes up to 600 watts max solar input. 36 volt goes up another 300 watts to 900 max and 48 volts it can accept up to 1200 watts of solar. And they do have larger ones too, the 30 amp and the 40 amp uh, models. So if you need more oomph, you can totally get to whatever size that you need for that. Can the battery, a uh, 12 volt, 100 amp hour battery run a microwave? And yes, the microwave is in my garage. I actually only use it for testing, just for you guys. I don't use it in my kitchen. I've got uh, the Renogy 3000 watt inverter charger here. So that can handle the microwave very easily. Not all batteries can handle the microwave surge. So let's see what happens. Looks like it's handling it like a champ. This particular microwave draws about 1800 watts when it's running. So you could get a little over 20 minutes straight run time on this from that battery. All right, got the battery, uh, battery. Follow the yellow cord. Can it run? a full-size gas furnace. We're gonna input the power here through this easy generator switch. Highly recommend uh, these for anyone that has a gas-fired furnace. Yep, it's running it. Lower and all piece of cake. From past times of measuring, this furnace pulls about 500 watts. So you could easily get uh, four to six hours of continuous runtime uh, with a furnace like this on that battery. And you may even get more runtime because furnace is cycling off and on, then uh, you'll get uh, even longer run times. Can this battery power follow the yellow cord? I'm gonna take a little bit of a walk because that inverter is insanely heavy and I'm not feeling like moving it today. A full size 120 volt mini split. Let's find out. Yes, it can. Piece of cake. This unit uh, generally pulls anywhere from 200 watts on up to about 900 watts, typically somewhere between the 600 watt and 200 watt range. So you could probably expect about three hours runtime on this unit from that single battery. In this battery run a full-size household vacuum cleaner. Let's find out. 
Can this battery have power? Battery, power, follow the cord. A high-end gaming PC. Now what we've got here are three 4K monitors. And on this one, we're running a gaming benchmark. And as you can see, it's running great. I have a video coming up about this uh, UPS uh, device. But uh, if you look, uh, we're pulling uh, a little over 500 watts. Uh, actually, fairly close to 600. We can power a high-end gaming PC, no problem. Based on that uh, data, that battery could run that uh, high-end gaming PC slash workstation for a little over two hours without any issues at full power. Obviously it would run it for a lot longer uh, if you weren't going full bore on it. In this battery here, power an electric hot plate. Let's find out. Doesn't seem to be having any problems. It's one of everyone's favorite tests. Can this 12 volt 100 amp hour battery run a batch of wash. The hardest thing for the battery to do is start the dryer. You can see we've got a bunch of clothes in there, all wet, ready to dry. Once it gets started, it uh, usually goes okay, but uh, it's just getting it started that's a hard thing. This is a gas dryer, 120 volt power. Obviously, we've got uh, the washer right here. If you look uh, back here, you can see the uh, it's wired for a 240 volt uh, dryer right there, but uh, is not being used. You can see the 120 volt uh, outlet is empty. That's because uh, both machines are plugged into this plug strip that is being powered off the battery. So uh, let's uh, give this uh, dryer a test here. Will it start? Place your bets. Three, two, one. Nice, it did. Started it, no problem. All right, let's do a batch of wash next. All right, we're on spin mode. And uh, as you can see, both machines are running like champs. And again, it's being powered off that battery through that inverter. How long can this battery right here Power, full size kitchen refrigerator. What we've done here is I've got the plug coming out of the fridge. It's going into this power station, which is fully charged. And I just barely turned it on, plugged it in. The fridge is pulling 97 watts. What we're gonna do is plug this battery into the DC input on this power station. The reason I do the power station in the middle is that way if this battery dies in the middle of the night or whatever, the power station will see the fridge through. We don't run the risk of letting the fridge get too warm or anything like that. In addition, we are going to be doing a capacity test. So I've got the Victron Smart Shunt right here. This shunt is zeroed out, so that way we can uh, do a capacity test. Let's plug this in. Very good. And it is 9.18 p.m. All right, it has finished uh, discharging. I actually had to put uh, battery charger on temporarily to get the BMS to wake back up so I could get my shunt turned back on. But uh, if we look at the results, it's 4.39 p.m. the following day, but it did not last that whole time. This is just the chance I've had to film. It actually ended at about just after 1 p.m. this afternoon. So this battery ran my full-size fridge for a little over 16 hours, or about 16 hours. In terms of the capacity test, we got really, really close, but uh, not quite to full capacity. We pulled 96 amp hours. So not quite the full 100 amp hour capacity, but very, very close. Let's do some testing with this uh, solar charge controller. I'm really excited about this. You can see, if I turn this on, hopefully, there you go, 12.2 volts. And that's because this battery is pretty much dead. It ran a full-size fridge in the last test uh, all the way till it quit. I've included here in the middle this Victron Smart Shunt. That will be able to monitor uh, how much power we're able to put in. Because we're charging a 12-volt battery, it uh, has a limit of 300 watts that this, that this charge uh, controller can put in. And so I've got two 200-watt panels put together. 
that is 400. Now, we all know that solar panels never produce the full rated power. As you can see, the sun has just risen. These are facing due south. The uh, sky is cloudless today. Uh, a little bit of haze in the sky, but uh, anyway, should be good. Now these are not gonna be optimized with an angle or anything. I'm just gonna kind of stick them there and just let them go. On the charge controller now, not only do you have the battery light illuminated, but you also have the PV light illuminated now. Excuse the mess, this is just a test. Uh, so wire management was not adhered to. <laughs> There's this nice little, uh, touch button right here see it says zero percent on the battery we've got a temperature of 82 because we're outside and uh, anyway a couple of settings there but let's jump into the app because that makes it super super easy to run now let's jump into the charge controller app here now at the moment nothing's happening because we need to connect so if you come up here to the top right there's that bluetooth sign there and uh, it will find uh, all of the uh, Bluetooth things in the nearby area and we want the Sunrock S20 so we're going to click connect on that and here we go now we can see all of the information so we can see that the uh, battery is at 12.3 volts the solar input coming in is just over 30 volts those panels are connected in series the uh, current is vacillating because uh, the shade is shifting as the breeze blows in the tree. Um, but uh, in the low 20 watt range at the moment, again, because we're barely starting. But uh, I love all the information down here at the bottom. It's telling us what the highest voltage is, what the lowest voltage was, how much power we've put in, what uh, the maximum amount of power is we've charged uh, up to so far which has been 36 watts historical information now this is the first time we're using the unit but uh, you know over the course of some time it would be very cool you've got these curves uh, with all kinds of different data uh, to crunch numbers on and uh, check on performance and stuff which i think is awesome if we come to the bottom right at the parameter setting up here it says locked on the setting we're going to confirm the unlock we're going to change the system voltage. We're going to put it to 12 volts. The battery type is going to be lithium. The only way to change it to lithium is in the app here. So just an FYI on that. On our charge voltage, we are going to go to, I'm going to go 14.6. That's the upper end of the charging. And uh, the rest of the stuff I'm going to uh, leave as is. So we're going to confirm. In the top left corner right here, you can click on this and this just gives you some information about uh, the device you're connected to. You can clear your historical data and uh, you can do a factory reset from that point. And that's pretty much it. But you really don't need uh, more than that for a solar charge controller. This gives you all the information that you need. And I love how the bulk of it is just on this first page right here. So just as a glance, you can see uh, what everything is doing and uh, what's happening. The panels just came into full sun. It's still in the morning, so the sun is not uh, directly overhead or anything yet. As you can see right uh, here on the app, we've got over 100 watts coming in now, 130. We've uh, produced over 42 watt hours. So far, so good. Working great. It's about 12.30 in the afternoon, so the sun is pretty much straight overhead. We're getting, as you can see, 220, 230 watts at the moment today is going to be a little over 100 degrees so it is incredibly hot we all know solar panels do not perform as good in the hot as they do in the cool but it's looking pretty good let's just scroll down here so far we've put in 500 watt hours just a quick update here uh we are coming up on four o'clock the voltage is rising rapidly we're at 4.2 volts getting really close to full we're still pumping in a little over 200 watts notice uh, that uh, the charge controller has said we put in 1326 watt hours let's compare that with the victron so on the victron app it's saying we still have about five amp hours left to go before we're full okay literally moments uh, after that video we have hit 14.6 volt charging parameters filled that battery up piece of cake all before the end of the day let's talk about the best part of this whole setup now this is pricing based on when this video is being made so obviously things will change 
But uh, check out the pricing on these. You've got your uh, 100 amp hour 12 volt battery. It's a no frills battery, right? It's just a 12 volt battery. No app. No a Bluetooth, nothing like that. $155.99. And then this controller, $115.28. For grand total of both of those being $271.27. Free shipping, no tax. Of course, it, uh, you might uh, pay tax depending on where you live too. But nonetheless, that is a pretty darn good price tag. And then just by comparison for fun, uh, this is another uh, outfit uh, that... Uh, frequently has uh, good priced uh, solar products and what have you. We are significantly more in cost. This isn't, you know, tit for tat. I did add the Bluetooth a module for the charge controller, but it is a 20 amp uh, charge controller. And then of course, uh, the battery is going to have some differences, I'm sure. Uh, however, it does not appear to have any kind of Bluetooth or communications or anything. Kind of a, a good comparison side by side here of these two costs. Well, that uh, concludes our testing for today. I am very impressed. Uh, this did a fantastic job. I really think that especially the charge controller is something that you just can't beat for the price. Everything from the build quality that's pretty much entirely metal and glass, a nice app control, and, and really as far as uh, lithium iron phosphate batteries go, uh, the price on uh, this one here uh, can't be beat. I haven't seen one that uh, is less expensive than that. Links for both of these are down in the description. Check them out. I've got a discount code as well. And uh, please leave comments. I love to hear from all of you. I try to read all of your comments and I try to respond to as many of them as I possibly can. Do you think this has merit? I think so. But uh, I love hearing your ideas and your thoughts and your take. So please sound off in the comments. I want to hear from you. You guys are so great, so smart. It's so awesome to hear from all of you. Don't forget to give the video a like and uh, please consider subscribing. And we'll catch you next time.